what we have so much in this episode we see vera as a mother harry burns down the house they find jane doe in a purple lake all of this and where is julian speaking of julian we have a very special guest in studios with us but you have to stay to see who it is stay tuned <laughs> you're tuned in to after buzz tv the espn of tv talk now let the buzz Love the song. Yes, it's comes in very cool. I just want to let it ride. It really actually ties in with the feel of the show really well too. Oh, this like is somehow, perfect. you know, yeah. It's so perfect. How that worked out. <laughs> Hi everyone, you are with After Buzz TV here at the Center After Show. We are talking season two, episode six, part six. And you know, we have a very special guest, but before we get started, I want to introduce my lovely co-hosts. Hey everybody, Zia here. Hey everybody, Alice here. Super excited to talk about this episode and to our special guest. Yes, Yay. speaking of, I'm Takira Shabray, and the very special guest that we have in studios with us today is Ellie Shahenik. Thank you so much Ooh. for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have so much to talk about. We are talking about Vera as a mother. We're talking about Glenn Fisher and his knee deep into all of this the the dead body the uh julian is taken i mean like so much to talk about and of course we'll have our very special segment killer kids but overall thoughts of this episode before we jump in i loved it because they finally started to explain some things to us and vera opened up which i was waiting for and i'm really glad she did and i'm starting to think that her taking care of julian and her love for julian is starting to overshadow her wanting to keep Mosswood secret. And I'm yeah. really happy that we're finally starting to see that. Yeah, that's definitely true. I also really enjoyed that we saw Julian's character have a, a really, like, huge emotional range in this episode. You know, we yes. saw him, you know, with some violence to himself in the beginning of the episode. Oof, and yeah. that ending of the episode was even crazier. Um, so I'm excited to see uh, where his character goes. And then there was just so many things that, happened in this episode so much heather and harry and everybody yeah. so it was a really great episode i feel like it was uh, a lot of loose uh loose ends tied so um so yeah of course uh, again we have alicia here and overall thoughts of the episode i'm sure you loved it right <laughs> yeah it was a fun episode uh nice mm -hmm. i liked it uh, yeah well uh we'll get into your favorite part and i'm so interested to hear it but Let's talk first part of the after show, just Vera. Vera as a mother. We see her kind of vulnerable, and she really, when she says she was with Jillian from birth, I mean, she can't get any closer. You um. could tell that she formed an immediate attachment to him mm -hmm. when she was holding him. And my first thought was that Marin was going to, I'm sorry, Marin was going to die from the hemorrhaging. And that's, right. yeah, that's what I originally thought was going to happen. And when you show when they show her in the next scene, I was like, oh, okay, so she doesn't. So how does this happen? And then you mm -hmm. realize she really has no interest in being a mother. And Vera forms this attachment to this beautiful little baby, and she's like, yeah. I this baby is mine. Yeah. Very yeah, I mean, so. I don't think Marin really ever, you know, wanted to be in that situation. So I can understand mm -hmm. why she was kind of not interested in in taking on the mother role also everything happened so quickly yeah you know, and they're like here take this i think um, she cared it's just she it's one of those things when she thought that she just wasn't good enough at it and well yeah because so... you can tell she's definitely bothered when she sees that vera is breastfeeding mm -hmm. she's like oh that's Which a, a weird thing and a lot of people might think that that's kind of weird that she would start lactating but it's kind of common yeah it's more common than people think i've heard that even men can do it that men will start lactating really <laughs> yeah a little interesting i don't know i don't think that's incredibly common but it does happen yeah mm -hmm. it, well yeah it's, it's common <laughs> there you go people um we uh i we definitely saw like for me i know vera was a little bit more vulnerable last episode a little tease of vulnerability in the last episode in this episode i think she really took us there and we start to see her kind of going up against the beacon more so who saw that 
coming. Like she kind of took over. Yeah, I didn't, I honestly didn't see it happening that way. I didn't see that she was, I mean, for lack of a better term, the voice of reason here. Mm -hmm. She's talking into the beacon and being like, we are going too far. It's getting violent. And she started to question all of his work. And it sucks because I know that it was hard for her for that because as I believe it was in her words, he saved her. And now she has to reconcile with the fact that she doesn't, that she's starting to question his practices. Yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, and I think, you know, I I was wondering the whole season, you know, like what happened to the beacon? Because he's obviously not around anymore. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So it's always been kind of a wonder of like, hmm, did he leave? Did he run away? Did he go to start? something new or is he in the purple lake i don't know well, yeah after this so maybe ending. we found something else out mm-hmm. you know it, well she she vera kind of had me on uh on edge i do want to touch uh quickly on uh on julian uh and his kind of interaction with vera because we see um we see him, her also have that connection, that interaction again at the end with Jillian. So it starts with this amazing connection at the beginning of the episode. And then before we even like really touch on the beacon, we start to see throughout the last couple of episodes, this connection is kind of weird. So I would like to ask uh, you, Alicia, so Jillian obviously has a really wide range connection with Vera. What was it like working with uh, Carrie Coon with that connection? Yeah, it was interesting because, you know, throughout the course of the shooting, as we spent more time together, we got to know each other more and we became closer. And in the story, Julian is actually moving away from Vera. So it was sort of, um, yeah, the sort of, the the sort of (laughs) reverse. (laughs) Yeah. I love that shot they got of the of the baby looking at Vera. That was uh, really amazing. Yeah, yeah. the rock. Yeah. It looks so real life. Like obviously <laughs> it's a real life baby, but it's just like I mean down to the size, the mm-hmm. the, the detail, all of mm-hmm. that. So that's really good, really good call out. So, so Elisha, do you keep Elisha. up with the show? Um, do you watch it every week? I watch it on a weekly basis. Yes. Awesome. Uh-huh. And so, just like the rest just of us. Just like the rest of <laughs> yes. us. So I'm sure you don't know all of the plot lines before you get to watch it being on set. Do you, do you get to, like, did you know what was going to happen when you finished shooting? Or is it still kind of a surprise for you as you're watching? Um, well, by the time we finished shooting, I think... The thing was, when we were shooting certain episodes, I didn't. I had a scope of what was going to happen in the next episodes and throughout the season, but I didn't have a very, very detail. I didn't have the script in advance, and we got the script every week for the next episode. Oh wow! So it was a little bit of a challenge to um, to shoot that without the um, without such a clear picture of the character. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, but I, I think it. I think it worked out in the end. I don't think. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you it's did a phenomenal it. job to get a script every week. Could you imagine? Like that, you did a really good job. I really <laughs> loved also seeing you're playing um, a character in Alex Inc. to playing because I'd watched that before I'd seen this show. And when I found out that you were in this show, I was like, oh my gosh, because I was really excited to see you play such a different character, and it was. It was really cool because you did such an amazing job. How was it? How were the processes different for you preparing for each role? Because they're so obviously they're so different. Yeah, yeah, it's a drastic change. Um, <laughs> it's a very different, uh, you know, very different. Uh, I mean, it's almost different, a different, uh, a different job in a sense. I mean, right. It's, um, you know, Alex Inc. is a comedy. Is it's you know, it's trying to figure out how to people how to make people laugh at the most you can with each line, and and trying to figure out funny ways to do everything. With the sinner, it was more of this this arc of a character trying to get the you know from episode one to episode eight where the character goes, and trying to make that arc work and have it be believable and 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 construct a a character you know blossoming through three months, or or. Uh, two how long three weeks i don't know how long the series takes place over. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much 
Well, yeah, you've done a phenomenal job, and I think you know everyone that watches it always has such praise for you as well when they are done watching every episode. So. Yes. Oh, yeah, we've for sure. really enjoyed watching you on screen, too. Um, I want to kind of end uh, our topic on Vera with um, the her kind of taking charge. I guess we'll, we'll wrap Vera's character up, but her taking charge um, at the end with, uh, with Beacon and possibly serving him an apology tea. Yes. Uh -huh. I know ears are going oh, up like oh, crazy. <laughs> yeah, this infamous, uh, maybe infamous, I don't know, apology tea. Um, I didn't like that she says, maybe I'm a stickler, but she told Ambrose, okay, I'm going to tell you everything. And then she says, uh, and I just want to quote her because it just did not tie and I'm not buying it. But she said, I wish I'd stopped it sooner. Um, and then she, so she's pretending like, okay, I stopped it. And then Ambrose was like, okay, well, what happened to Beacon? And she's like, oh, he just wasn't happy with us. And he just decided <laughs> to go. Well, then what did you stop? So, well, and we still don't know what actually happened to Marin because obviously, you know, we both thought that when, after she gave birth, that mm -hmm. she was, we were like, oh, that's how she died. Okay. But then we see her again. <laughs> she and pops out of nowhere. Minutes, she's like, oh, I'm here and I don't want to breastfeed. So, yeah. And we <laughs> don't even know, and we don't even know who the Jane Doe is. I know a lot well, of us are, yeah, a lot of us are, Hopping to the to the uh, the clues That's of right. it possibly being Marin, so it hasn't confirmed it, but it you could know. be some other mysterious Carmen Bell types that you never you know, know. Are unaccounted mm -hmm. for. There was a lot about that, but Carmen is an amazing topic to get to. Before we do, though, we have a very you know a small favor to ask of you here at the After Buzz family. I think uh, Zia has a little bit to explain. Ooh, yes. Hey, After Buzzers. Our network produces after shows for nearly all of your favorite TV shows. From dramas, reality TV, sci-fi, and more, there is no network that works harder to serve television fans. But we need your help. We're asking that you please subscribe to one or more of our YouTube channels. By subscribing to our channel, YouTube will suggest content that is tailor-made for you. And you'll help After Buzz continue to grow. And if you're worried about te pesky notifications, don't be because they're optional. You can turn them off. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, so hit that subscribe button now for this channel and check out our other AfterBuzz YouTube channels as well. Let us know you did so in the comments and we'll thank you on air. For now, thanks for being the best fans and for helping us be the ESPN of TV Talk. Yes, yes. yes. We love you guys. You are like our extended panel. So the topics, the questions, the comments, we love it. We welcome it. Bring it on. Thank you guys. Um, but you said there uh, could be possible more Marins in the Purple Lake. That's right. Um, speaking of more Marins, like, we learned more about what these women went through. Like, Carmen gave in her deposition that it was sexually assaulted, she was sexually assaulted, physically assaulted, I'm sure emotional, and this Glenn Fisher yes, character. the plot thickens with him. The plot thickens. So the whole, oh, I wasn't a member, I was there a couple of times. We learn more about this uh, this guy. We learn, what do y'all think? We learn that he's there from the beginning. Oh, and yeah, that, like he said. Mm -hmm, and that his grandfather sold him that land. Did his mm -hmm. grandfather sell him that land to be helpful because he was also in on the work that they're doing? Yeah. And possibly he had started there as a young kid, maybe even. Yeah. Because if it was his grandfather that sold him that, that land... You know, we don't know when exactly that timeline is, but he could have been a young man or even a teenager when that happened. Well, Glenn says, I sold him, meaning the beacon, I sold him this land. Right. So, it, you know, Glenn sold the land, supposedly, to, uh, right, to, to the beacon. Yes. But how surprised, I mean, we see the burns on, I, I, I made a really interesting note on body parts in this. I mean, I know I spoke on Julian's arm the, the last mm -hmm. episode. We see burns on the feet of mm -hmm. a couple of the women, yeah. uh, Marin, I'm sorry, Carmen included, and the prostitute, maybe? Yeah. I don't know. But what I don't, were those I, cigarette burns? There were cigarette burns, okay, yeah. yeah. That's so, what it looks like. So, right, so yeah. supposedly at some point, maybe this is Glenn's, um... Tre treadmark? Do you even call it a treadmark? I don't know what what you would call it, but like a calling card. Yeah. yeah. So what do you what what do you guys think that those mean? Well, 
I'm wondering if that is something that happened to him when he was a kid. Maybe he grew up in an abusive home, oh. and so he keeps he has that. I'm I want to see his foot now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the pattern is on his foot, and maybe he keeps repeating it. Yeah, as part of his working through his trauma, but he's doing it to other people. Yeah. We get a, a clear definition on that because Carmen says we act out what we've been through, mm -hmm. not fantasy. Because Vera said Bess's, uh, you know, whole thing about Julian crying and covering his mouth and all of that, that it was a, quote, fantasy during the session. But we realized Carmen kind of sheds light on it being what we went through. We're just reenacting it. Right. And that's even what Vera says. She's like, it used to be fantasy and now it's literal. And yeah. That is dangerous. Yeah. I'm just wondering what with Glenn Fisher, you know, because he obviously liked the beacon. So if all of a sudden the beacon disappeared, I'm just wondering what happened in that time frame. Like, what would he have done? Exactly. And how is he now not talking about the beacon not being there and he's okay with Vera? So that's yeah. something that I'm interested to see in the next Pretending next to not episode. know Marin, uh, or I'm sorry, Marin, that's because right. the beacon specifically told Vera, hey, I want Marin to spend time right. with Glenn Fisher. And my only like final note on him was we were under the impression that you had to be a member of Mosswood in order to, in order to enter, in order to do sessions. Glenn is clearly kind of breaking those rules and bringing other people involved. He even when he uh, when he was talking to Vera and he said I brought, you know, where's the beacon? I brought people. I told him there was a session and I brought people. Well, these people are clearly not members of Mosslid. And so that could explain the connection that they have in the city and the blackmail possibilities that these people could have. Oh, yeah. You wonder if the DA's ever been there. Yeah. Huh? And the chief so and all this other stuff. So what I want to know is you know. if he's there and if he's an inside uh, person at Mosswood, why was he trying to try Julian as an adult? Do they have something against him? I'm sure. They had, maybe Julian is, you know, we love his character. He's our favorite. <laughs> maybe, maybe he, could he was just... the demise of the beacon. A, you know, mm -hmm. who knows? Who knows? You know, but. Um, the beacon has some crazy grudge against him. <laughs> I, I, if I, he's I, all, I don't think he's alive, though. <laughs> No, yeah, no. I'm interested. I, don't think so I, I asked for some predictions in live chat. So if you're joining us in live chat, there's a few of you. Thank you for watching. We appreciate it. Um, drop your predictions. We'll get to those at the end of this after show. Uh, let us know what you think. Where's Marin? Where's Beacon? Where? Where's everybody at this point? Where's Julian? Where's everybody? Um, and what do you think happened? But we are on iTunes as well. So listen on iTunes. Uh, drop us a review. Five stars, because, you know, one through four just don't work sometimes. A little glitchy <laughs> son of a gun. But uh, let us know what you think. Let us know what you want to talk about. Um, <laughs> jumping to Jane Doe and the Purple Lake. Um, I know we briefly touched on it. Uh, any other thoughts on that? I mean, it, you guys think it's Marin? Uh, yeah. Okay. I think it's Marin, and if it's not Marin, then it's just another. They're going to uncover that there's, you know, other women that were at Mosswood. That yeah, maybe got pregnant and then tried to escape. Just tossed them. How weird is it that uh, the beacon just kind of swims there like it's a summertime vacation spot? Right. With I, dead bodies. It also there. made me feel like Glenn Fisher is actually the father of maybe some of these babies. Mm. Maybe Julian and or maybe the baby that would have been in Carmen. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think someone else, which is really strange, but I'm going to hold mine. Mm, but, prediction yeah. for that. Okay. Them. I was honestly Anything thinking else? when they were searching the lake that they were going to find the beacon's body. Yeah, I, yeah. I did too. That's what I was expecting. I did too. Especially after the story where the <laughs> tea, I was like, oh, okay, so they're going to find his body. Right. Nope. Just, you know, just causing more more whereabouts uh, on people. <laughs> um, I do like that Heather in invited Ambrose, though, back kind of into the, sem the mm -hmm. semi-circle. <laughs> I call it semi because, you know, it could always change. Well, that was <laughs> such a cost, big so. point of this episode, I felt like, because at the end of the last one, we saw that Harry was basically, like, kicked out. And then this one opens, and he's investigating still. But obviously, yes. I was like, oh, he's up to his old, still investigating, even though nobody wants him to be investigating. Yeah. But then everyone was just kind of like, yeah, it's cool. No one is mad. Like... Yeah, you know? and right. I was like, oh, okay. Because <laughs> everyone if, changed their mind. I feel like they didn't want to admit how much they needed him. Yeah. And when Heather got the video, she was thinking, oh, 
crap. <laughs> yeah. And he got the video by breaking the rules, which yes. we know Harry likes to do. This whole breaking and entering thing is just all his. <laughs> like, you know, that's his thing. Right. But he always gets something good. So it's kind of like, <laughs> you can't really get him in trouble because it's, it's what's leading to, to the case. Um, well, Beans, well, we'll wrap up on Harry before we uh, talk a little bit more with uh, Alicia about his character. I just have one more thing, and maybe this should be saved for predictions, but I just wanted to talk about who you thought took um, Julian out of the bedroom window. That is predictions. Are okay, you serious? We're not, I'm talking, that. We are not <laughs> talking about that right now. Look, I want to get into Come it now. On. <laughs> We'll, we'll save that treasure right before we talk to, you know, Alicia about his character. We'll save that treasure. I don't know. What do you guys think? You know, we're eager to talk <laughs> about it for sure. Yeah, so if um, you have a thought, tell us in the chat. Chat it up. <laughs> Shout out to uh, What's Up Young Pro. Uh, the couple people I can't see or pronounce my computer is frozen, but I see the hearts from the last one. So, hey, uh, and hey to everyone else that's watching. Yes, we've um, got a bad internet in here today, so. Yeah, our Wi-Fi is, like, <laughs> ridiculously slow. Let's wrap up on Harry, though. Um, we finally see what happened, the big moment. And we finally f- find out about his mom, Rosemary, mm-hmm. confirmation she that died. she died. Mm-hmm. Um, he sees all of these. Obviously, the we think the DA has somebody watching Harry, taking pictures, tracking him down, whoever um, at this point. Um, she's dead. We find out he burns down the house. Burned down the mm-hmm. house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this How has been crazy. like the whole season. We've been waiting to get more information. And he was just... Yeah tricking himself in his mind the entire time and making it seem like his mom was the one that did it all, yeah. When it was really him. And you know what, though? It honestly, for me, is really hard to blame the poor kid. When you have a parent like that that's not parenting you at all, he he needed something. Mm-hmm. He Apparently, she was either quiet, like we see her in her, his flashbacks, which means he's getting absolutely nothing from her, yeah. or he didn't. Ex- he just kind of alluded to the fact that she was exploding. So I think that, in a way, that was his sort of cry for help. Of Get me out of here. Get me yeah. someone. Get me something. Anything. I'm getting nothing here. So it's hard yeah. to get... I, I can't be mad at him. That's... What else does it... He was very young there. What else would you do in that situation when you all you have is that woman? And that's not much. Yeah. And definitely not to... Um... How do you say, like, condone anything that he did? Well, of course not. Don't set anything on fire. I don't want to condone that. In the television show. Yeah. (laughs) But but a lot of kids, uh, uh, that that happens a lot of cases. I mean, I think Harry touched on it best when he said, Jillian, yes, he did these things. But most of the time when kids do these things, something is, there's some kind of connection. Not condoning what they do, but so many kids, I feel like, face that issue, like, some of my friends were like, I was a bad kid just because I wanted someone to pay attention to me. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's not right, but it's an issue that I feel like a lot of people don't talk about. Like they always blame the parents on, you know, how bad they raise the kids or they blame the kid for just being crazy or maybe he has mental, he well, or she has mental disorder. Did any of you guys disorder. ever do anything that your parents got really mad about like that? Oh, I'm sure. I mean, I can't I mean, recall I never anything, set anything but... on fire. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> Not arson, so yeah. I don't know. But, you know. I it, did it's, some fire, it's firecrackers different. one time. I tried to blow up a, um, <laughs> a wood truck. But oh, okay. my mom helped, so I felt oh, like well, <laughs> So you just wanted a little attention. Yeah. But, but yeah, I love that connection um, that he has with Jillian at the end, you know, bleeding into Jillian and, and wrapping up our topics. Um, he finally, Jillian is the one that he chooses to tell his truth about. Because Julian's, he's literally looking in the mirror just a few years previous. How, I love this connection. I absolutely loved it. What, what about you guys? Oh, yeah. I love more and more that Julian is starting to trust Harry. And yeah. also, he's getting stuff done for him. Because as we yes. find out, it wasn't Vera that got him out of the juvenile detention center. It was mm-hmm. Harry. Yeah. And and he's learning to trust him more and more and for good reason. And I like that because I think that he's the one that's truly going to come through for him. Yeah. Not that Vera doesn't care. I just think she doesn't know how to go about it properly. Mm-hmm. And Harry has maybe more connections. Eggs. Yeah. Well, yeah, and now we're seeing finally Harry, all Harry's hard work kind of paying off with yeah. their relationship actually kind it's of nice. being a little bit more cemented. So, yeah, yeah I enjoyed it yeah. too. 
And then we, of course, wrap up with where the heck is Julian? What happened? Harry tried to give him this amazing, like, feedback. Like, you know what? Maybe it's guilt. And you just need to stare guilt in the face. And poor Julian tries to stare guilt in the face. And it's, you know, guilt just takes him. That's so... Right. What the heck? I tried to freeze. I don't know if anybody else. I tried to, like, stop my DVR on the face, I like, eight a, times. I have a prediction on that, but I'll wait. Ooh, okay, nice. But did anyone see it coming? I had no idea. I never saw this coming. No, I did not think he was real at all. And also, I'm sorry, but what if he's staying at a boy's home or with a... How Foster. can the wind? Yeah, how can the window be open that easily from the outside? He's awaiting trial. He's not saying he should be on complete lockdown, but like let's uh, at least make sure you can't open the window. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, you know he went back to the foster care. I guess that's a good point. But. Well, yeah, I can't remember if it was episode three or four, but we heard Julian talking to. I guess it was Harry saying that the dreams that I have, but then I remember waking up and. You know, I, my and Vera saying that like people had come into the house to take. Yeah. Whatever. So it's like the that second was the one where I was like, okay, that wasn't a dream that was real. Mm-hmm. So I guess I wasn't as surprised as you guys. Okay. So. Well, yeah, I could definitely see that. So, so Elisha, we want to talk to you a little about a little bit about this character. Like, obviously, the ending was so terrifying to we feel like Julian. Mm-hmm. Um, was this scene? Was it your favorite? Was the most frightening? Like, what was your most favorite frightening scene of the entire show? I think this one's definitely uh definitely <laughs> up there. I, I got chills when I watched it with that uh with that music at the end. Oh, like, over there. It was a fun scene to shoot, also. You know, one of those sort of um physical scenes. Yeah. Yeah. You might, you, uh, yeah. <laughs> Did it stick with you, like? the feeling did you did you find yourself looking over your shoulder in real life uh, uh, no not so much no <laughs> only, only as julian you're you're tougher than i am i would have been freaking myself out going grocery shopping or something <laughs> is it very different for to shoot because you shoot the and it's it's definitely a lot of work going to shooting it is it really different between shooting it and seeing the finished product yeah yeah, it's very different. It's you shoot you 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 make three films, as somebody said once. I don't remember who. <laughs> the one you write, the one you shoot, and the one you edit. It's I mean, it's it changes completely. Are there wow. like parts that you shot that get cut out, and you're like, hey, I remember shooting that. That's not in here. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a couple. Uh, not so many this this show. Uh, a couple, a couple that uh. No, I can't think off the top of my head. From other there projects. Were a couple. Do you, you know, have they, a... they have a time constraint on um on TV. They have to make it, you know, forty five minutes so Right. Do you have a favorite scene that you shot in the episodes that we've already watched? A favorite scene that I shot? Uh one of the funnest to shoot. Um <laughs> <laughs> There's so uh... many. Yeah. Maybe like the very first one. What was that like? I mean, you... the death scene was um. Well, it's interesting. We shot it over the whole first sequence was shot over a period of like four or five days, I think. And, oh wow, know, that's fast. First, yeah, so it's um, they were separated. So the um, uh, um. The gemstone the... weed and the flower, the tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that good the, stuff. Um, the death scene was uh was messy. Punched <laughs> <laughs> it was messy. Uh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> Is that the your first time, time with that, that much? She ordered the um the vomit. She ordered it for lunch. It was it was chai opio. Oh <laughs> gosh. gosh, that's ordered. Uh, you know, ordered. Yeah. What's that? Postmate. <laughs> Postmate vomit. She ate her vomit. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> at least it didn't taste too bad for her. I know, right? <laughs> it sounds like it's not that yeah. bad. <laughs> at the end of at the end of this episode, um, obviously, like Julian and uh, Harry have a connection. I know you you mentioned how it was working with Carrie. What was it like um, working with Bill Pullman? Oh, that's that's amazing working with Bill Pullman. I mean. As there's so much to learn from him every day is just just watching him is 
and uh, you know, working with him and 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 connecting with him in the scene is is um, something. It's 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 a, it's a nice experience. Oh wow! <laughs> awesome. In the end, there when 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 our when our hands touch, it was actually um, something that just came on the spur of the moment. That wasn't scripted. Ooh, just wow. out of the emotions of the scene, I, I reached over and took his hand. I wow. love that they kept that. I would never have known. That worked perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and that just shows what kind of actor that you both are, like actors you are. You're so, that's what it's about. That's the um, instinct. Yeah, the yeah. instinct, the character, the chemistry. So uh, yeah, it's that's really nice. Now, do you have a favorite actor and actress that you've looked up to since you started? Favorite actor and actress. <laughs> Not to drill him down into the old spot. Um, I mean, I like Daniel Day Lewis a lot. Um, oh, awesome. and, uh, <laughs> Very cool. I've seen a lot of his stuff, but um, uh, so like um, Emma Stone. Yeah, she's uh, great. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What would you say was Colin Firth? Also. Oh, oh conference is great. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. What would you say is your favorite thing about playing Julian and maybe the most challenging? Favorite thing about playing Julian? Uh, uh, let me start with the most challenging. I'll say <laughs> the most challenging thing, I think, was um, shooting the scenes out of order so even within every episode so we shoot every episode takes two weeks to shoot an episode you're not shooting the scenes chronologically so you might shoot the end of the episode the first day and the beginning of the episode the last day and so it's it's hard to um keep in your mind what are the what are the circumstances of what you're performing like what happened before what you know what what, what what's going to happen what are, what are you what's your state of mind in that scene um so you have to remember where you are in the in the script. Um, favorite thing about playing Julian? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's really it's really acting with other actors. I mean, um, you know, all of them are all of them are great. Uh, Carrie and, and Bill and you know, yeah. I don't want to spoil, but there's numerous. <laughs> uh -oh. No spoilers. <laughs> With no spoilers, no, you know, <laughs> acting with which each actor is a totally different experience, and it's it's something new and, and exciting every time. And, wow, yeah. that's great. Now, can we expect to see more of you on any other shows coming up? Not right now. No, there's nothing. Uh, nothing in the works at this point. But um, you're basking in the in the ambiance of something <laughs> amazing right yes. now. So. You know, I'm not. No, it's something I've always, maybe I'm not the only one. Something I've always wondered about actors your age. Like, are you homeschooled? Do you go to school now? How, if you do, how do you balance it? Friends, all of this, like regular day life. How yeah. does that work? Yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out that question. <laughs> um, right now I'm homeschooled. I've been homeschooled for a lot of my life, but, uh, Occasionally we go to, uh, I go to school mainly for social, for yeah. social reasons, because, you know, it's you need friends, nice people, <laughs> everybody's in school, so, <laughs> um, but yeah, and when I do go to school, I usually go part-time if they, uh, if they allow it, <laughs> which is a bit of a fight sometimes, <laughs> oh, gosh. but yeah. That's pretty yeah. cool. I also read that you're really into sports, that you play soccer and you like rock climbing and are there any other sports that you do? Golf. Golf? Oh, yeah. golf. golf. Awesome. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Do you do I, that? Is that your special uh, hobby outside of acting? I know I saw some pretty interesting, I love them, parodies, musical parodies. <laughs> I Can I just say big fan? I love that you're so into music. Which one are you talking about? My favorite was the, uh, I think it was featured Bruno Mars and it sounded like you're mystical. Right? So, yes. I'm like, look at him with the drums and the guitar. <laughs> he has his chain, just rapping his thing. Like, I mean, you killed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have a, you have a band with your, 
15 minutes before we left for the airport. Really last minute, but that was fun. <laughs> nice. Um, you ended with the brother. Oh, yeah. Yes. Like, you know, I like playing music a lot. A uh, lot of guitar and, um, like, you know, reading and, and writing and um, cooking. Cooking. Oh, <laughs> impressive. Okay, two quick ones then. What do you write and what do you cook? What do I write and what do I cook? <laughs> uh, I like to write a lot of, of poems, um, mainly scripts uh, in terms of, yeah, I, I write mainly screenplays. Wow. Um, Ooh. Films, That's like awesome. That. Jack of all trades. I, uh, I always I cook. Uh, I'm a big dessert guy. <laughs> oh, oh, me too. Us Same. too. Bring yeah. some to the studio for us. <laughs> and uh, tiramisu is one of my specialties. Ooh. You cook a tiramisu? A that's, good tiramisu. That's my favorite dessert. Oh my, okay, we're gonna have to make a little trip to Oregon <laughs> and, you know, celebratory uh, tiramisu to end the season. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I also recently read an interview that you love to make people laugh. Do you ever see yourself branching out from acting into maybe stand-up or other sort of forms of comedy? Yeah, stand-up makes me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> the thought of it. I don't blame um, you. With everything you've accomplished. If I work up the guts, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I like comedy. I mean, I think really the reason I set out to do acting is I just like to, I like to entertain people and to... To make people laugh is really the start of it. It's it's come a bit of a a long way from that, <laughs> but a distance. But um, yeah, that's that's the origin. Do you have a preference on roles that you like to take, or do you just kind of like to just anything that you can sort of try out? Um, right now I'm trying to get into sort of the the indie movie world. Um, oh. Which which there which there is less of is you know there's not a lot of roles for kids to begin with but uh, certainly not a lot in movies but I think generally branching towards the more serious side of things although mm. comedy would be nice maybe mm -hmm. after the cinema <laughs> you know <laughs> break it up a little um, bit <laughs> yeah you do an amazing job with emotions I mean even even as Julian. I mean, you look range from emotions, I guess, and, and we'll keep you. I know we're probably keeping you, but I would just say kind of a, a last question tying back to the center, like especially this episode, there's so many emotions. And I know you, that you said uh, Mr. Pullman was, uh, Pullman was kind of a an aid to help you. Were there any other actors that you kind of channeled or emulated uh, just to kind of connect to that emotion with Julian from, from the center or, or yeah from, from the center or well no just I guess in gen any actor in general but I guess to channel that emotion that Julian has in the center hmm. <laughs> that's a dumb one um, I guess <laughs> yeah yeah I don't know I mean in some scenes yeah it's more about um channeling or uh, or connecting with with the other person in the scene and, and feeding off of their energy oh, okay. a lot of Julian nice. scenes are sort of alone there's a lot of scenes with him just him and you know in isolation or in prison or whatever there is um that stuff tends to come more from 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 inside from sort of getting into the the, yeah. the mood. Don't know if that answers your question. No, <laughs> it, no, it does. I mean, that's amazing so, that you feed off of that energy. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I mean, we love talking yes. with you. Uh, we have you. like two. You are more than welcome to stay with us. We have two things we're going to wrap up the show with. Uh, it's our uh, Killer Kids segment and our predictions. Killer Kids. But, oh, yeah. yeah. You might want to stay and listen to this yeah. because it's always pretty good. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so our Killer Kids segment. Um yeah, what do you have for this week? All right, so... Let the music kind of run. This week on Killer Kids. <laughs> <laughs> so we went back in time this week, and up on the screen I've got a picture of... This is Jesse Pomeroy. He was born in 1859 in Charlestown, Massachusetts. And it's not very evident in this photo, but he actually had a defect in his right eye, um, which would make his right eye 
basically like covered in mucus all the time. So it looked mm-hmm. like he had like just like a white eyeball on one side. So he really scared people and he was bullied. Um, but in 1874, he actually captured four young boys and then he chopped them up and mutilated them and then um, just tried to get rid of the bodies. Um, <laughs> oh and my he, gosh. he was later caught, but he was sent instead of, instead of being sent to prison because he was only 11 years old when this happened. So instead of being sent to prison, he was actually sent to reform school. And this happened in South Boston um, as well. And then reform school, they were supposed to keep him for six years. But his mother apparently was able to pull some strings and they released him after six months. And then oh. when he was released, he went on to then kill... Um, a four-year-old boy and also a young girl um, who he slit their throats ear to ear, what? stabbed them multiple times, and then set one of them on fire. Okay, um, where is this guy now? Like, <laughs> like, I mean, obviously, this is a long time so, ago. But. <laughs> wow. So he was um, tried and convicted wow. um, after that. He w- actually was just questioned by police. I think he admitted killing them, and he was sentenced to death. But the governor of Massachusetts at the time felt bad for him and decided that he would just give him a life sentence. So the photo that we had up on the screen was actually him when he committed the crimes and then him later um, after he was released from solitary confinement, which he spent most of his life in. Wow. All right. This uh, segment, killer kid (laughs) turned killer adult. Uh, Well, thank you for that. Alice always comes with the good stuff, the killer kid segment. (laughs) Um, We are going to end the show on our favorite part predictions <laughs> and now your after buzz tv predictions now i know elisha cannot share anything good but he can <laughs> definitely kind of uh, listen to us babble about all of our crazy theories <laughs> who wants to kick it off i'll go first okay so i actually think that glenn fisher is the one that came in the window and took julian what um oh. I didn't think about that. Yeah. That's good. So okay. that's my prediction for that. And I think we're going to maybe find out what happened to the beacon in the next episode as well. Ooh. Okay. I think that Vera did kill the beacon. Unless, yes. unless, my only thought on this is that she definitely meant to, unless he maybe saw it coming from her and didn't drink the tea. And mm. then did, in fact, leave. And, and if, that's the, if that's the case, then I think that he was the one that took Julian. If he did die, <laughs> if he did die, uh, I think that it's everybody, and I think that they're, he doesn't like to talk about Moss, that, that um, why can't I think of his name Mosswood? all of a sudden? No. Um, Glenn Fisher? Glenn, Glenn Fisher oh, yeah. didn't want to talk about Mosswood because of everything that happened with, with Vera taking over, mm-hmm. and that's why he's trying to now get, Ju- him and the DA are trying to get Julian tried as an adult. Yeah, I did it on all of that. I think um, Glenn bringing people got way too ugly, right, way too quick. I think uh, because of that, um, it, you know, when Carmen was like, oh, this guy burned me, that he did this, I don't know his name. So my infamous, I said I was going to wait moment was she said she made it a point to say and there was this other guy and then blah 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 blah. she just skated past it right my theory it i i don't trust heather's dad oh i don't i don't (gasps) trust heather's dad i think he somehow has something to do with it i think maybe even though he said he hadn't joined the mosulet or had a chance to visit whatever uh I don't, I don't trust his, his want to always feed people. And then my mind was like, okay, uh, Vera fed the tea to the beacon. Julia knows about feeding people. Like, what is it about Heather's dad about feeding people? And then what really stood out to me was um, the beacon was talking about, I think, uh, Bess or Marin. I'll go back in my notes. But the beacon said, oh, Bess, whenever Bess had that injury on her leg, and Vera approached the beacon about it. The beacon said, well, uh, Bess needed that as much as uh, he did. And that's exactly what Heather's dad said to her about Marin. 
He's oh. like, oh, Mara needed that. Mara needed that. Uh, talking about going to Mosslid. Yeah. So I just don't trust. I don't trust. So that's my thing on, on him. And um, Vera, maybe she stares at the end. She stares at the barn like she's about to burn it down or something. Mm-hmm. It, you picked that up too, I right? I did, yeah. I, was I like... thought, yeah, I thought she was going to burn it down. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. That's just a few of mine. I had a few, but, you know. <laughs> I think we'll we'll start to learn a couple and I can't wait till next episode. So oh, me neither. Yeah. I love the comments, the predictions, all of that in the comments from last week. I love reading them. I'm so entertained. So drop them. We love them. Continue to do so. But that is pretty much all for us. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. But to continue the conversation, where can they find you ladies? Oh, you guys can find me on Twitter at Alice L. Ford or um, Instagram, Facebook and everywhere else at Alice's Adventures on Earth. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Zia underscore land. It's X-I-A underscore land. And you can find me, Takira Shabre, on Twitter and Instagram at Takira underscore Shabre. And Mr. Uh, Elisha Henning, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me if you want to on Instagram at <laughs> Elisha Henning. All right. Spell that. That is E-L-I-S-H-A-H-E-N-I-D. And on Twitter, Elisha underscore Henning. All right. Fantastic. <laughs> and continue to drop questions. He tweeted and uh, put on Instagram some cool questions that I know we probably didn't have time to get to, but continue to hand them out, comment. We'll look at those too. But yeah. for now, thank you so much, Elisha. Thank you for joining thank us. You. Thank and you. All of our viewers, we'll see you next you. week. Bye. 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 From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Bye. See you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.